thanks for taking part in the Wrexham.com General Election 2019 Q&A video. Uh, we'll dive straight in. Are you able to tell us a little bit about yourself, who you are, any political history and why you have the political leanings that you do? Well, thank you very much, Rob, for inviting me and all the other candidates to come along and do this interview. Um, I, I have to say, I think Wrexham.com does a very good uh, job for us all in terms of uh, giving a platform for us to express our views in a, in a balanced way. Um, and that's very good for democracy in Wrexham and Cleared South. So yes, um, I am the Conservative parliamentary candidate for Cleared South. Um, I stood here in the 2017 general election and increased the Conservative vote by almost 4,000. And I was also the candidate for the Welsh Assembly election in Cleared South in 2016. I live in the constituency just outside Chirk, and uh, I've had a career in business and finance. And more recently, I've been involved in local politics and also writing books, in particular, A History of Lake Vernwy Hotel, which is where I grew up, um, just over the border in Powys. And uh, those are, that, that's the activities I'm mainly involved in, in addition to my work as a parliamentary candidate. You mentioned their previous elections as well. You've stood for AM and MP. Uh, which would you prefer to be and why? Well, I think both positions are extremely important. And um, I obviously would like to become the Member of Parliament for Cleared South, but that's up to the, to the voters of Cleared South to decide. But clearly in Wales, with the devolution settlement, a lot of the services that we use day to day, um, particularly health and education, are, are conducted from Cardiff. So I think both positions are of equal importance. This will be the third election in four years. Uh, people say they're you know, fed up with party politics, politicians, and feel that you know, you're, you're all the same, they never listen. What will be different about you? Well, I think that the, the first thing that would be different about me is that I would be, if I am elected, and I only say if, that's, as I say, up to the people of Cleared South, if I am elected, I would be part of a parliamentary party all of whom have signed up uh, to Boris Johnson's Brexit deal. And I think a big part of the frustration in politics in recent years has been the inability of Parliament to pass uh, the Brexit withdrawal agreement, despite the fact that people voted in favour of it in 2016. I think that's the root of the problem. If we are elected as a government um, on the 12th of December, then the, that that agreement will be passed. The agreement is ready, it's waiting, it will be passed by the 31st of January. And I think that would do a lot to clear up the frustration in British politics. If you were representing Clue South, uh, Prime Minister questions today, what question would you ask the Prime Minister and what would you hope to uncover by asking it? I think the, the, the main question I would ask is about um, making sure that we get Brexit done. This is a seat that voted 60% leave. Um, I've been very struck when I've been going around the, the, um, the, the different communities. and I've been canvassing uh, across the length and breadth of Cluid South um, by the level of frustration at the deal not being done. So my question would be, um, please, can we make sure that this deal is done as fast as possible? Uh, putting party manifesto <coughs> items aside, uh, as you'd hope the parties themselves can take care of those. As an MP, you may get the chance to bring in a new law via a private member's bill. If you have that opportunity, what law would you look to bring in? I would bring a law in that improves um, mobile reception in Cluid South. That to me is one of the most frustrating problems about living around here. And I know there are all sorts of plans at national and at Welsh Assembly level um, to improve uh, mobile reception. But we've been hearing that for years and years. So I would like to have a special members bill um, that, I mean, obviously, it's not just going to improve the mobile reception in Cluid South, um, but actually sorts this problem out once and for all, because it is really making people's lives extremely difficult who live around here. What relevant experience do you think you have for the job of MP? I've got, um, I, I think, experience in, in a number of different areas. Um, firstly, from my career in business and finance, and I was involved in that for 25 years. And so I'm not coming to this as a career politician. I'm coming as somebody who's uh, done other work outside. 
And that also took me into continental Europe because effectively I was exporting British services to continental European companies. And um, that I think is a very useful depth of experience when we come to talk about international relations and Brexit in particular. I've also been very much involved in the charity world. I set up a charity, Constantine Music for the Elderly, which uh, was founded over 20 years ago and which I run myself. And that provides um, music, live music, for the elderly in care homes and day centres in England and Wales. And I'm also a, a trustee of the Clangothlin International Musical Eye Stedford. And for me, the heritage of Wales, the culture of Wales is incredibly important. And that's something that I would really like to, to focus on as a, as a Member of Parliament. And then the other area I, I would highlight is I've, I've had significant experience in local government as well. My, my view of politics is that you need to understand how the country works from the local level upwards. So I, I'm somebody who's come into it in midlife rather than early life. But since I've come into it, I've really thrown myself into standing for election, but also working as a councillor, because those, that's where you solve the day-to-day -day problems that really affect people's lives. You touched on it in an answer there, um, focusing on Wales. There's been a lot of talk in the last three years since the referendum about Scotland, Northern Ireland, England in their own right. How will you make the, the Welsh voice stronger in Parliament? Well, I think the, the Welsh um, voice is stronger by virtue of um, the devolution and the Seneth, and I strongly support the devolution of powers to Wales. And I'm pleased that the Conservative government um, has, has been very much behind that and has obviously come to a settlement where there are now tax raising powers for the Seneth and so on. So I, I'm a strong supporter of devolution and Wales running its own affairs. Um, but I think also it's up to the individual MPs themselves um, to, to speak up strongly for Wales. I think the, the, the Welsh nation by nature is um, good at projecting itself. It, it's an amazing country that punches well above its weight, whether it be in rugby or in all sorts of other different aspects of British life. But we, you know, for me, I, I was brought up in Wales at Lake Fernwy. I've lived here most of my life and I love this country and I think it has so much to offer. It has a different um, approach to life to England, which I like very much. And it's up to the job, uh, it's up to an MP um, to really sing its praises as loudly as they can. You've touched on mobile reception, so I'll put that one aside and I do put Brexit aside for this answer. What do you feel would be the top issue for Clude South in the forthcoming parliamentary term and how would you like to see the desired outcome? Well, I think that uh, if, if I may touch on two issues, one is the health service, but I do fully accept that that's the, the business of Cardiff, not um, Westminster. I'm very pleased that Boris Johnson has put £1.2 billion extra into the health service, just as he has into education in Wales. So that's very important. But when you talk to people, as I do on the doorstep, I mean, thousands of people in this campaign already, health is the issue after Brexit that they most um, often mention. So clearly health is going to be a very important matter. The other issue that, that I, I, for me, is very important is the environment and um, the climate change crisis. And again, you can argue that that's um, uh, very much the business of the Senate, but I think it's also the business of Westminster as well. And that's something that I would like to, to really focus on and promote as strongly as possible. You're backing a Save Our li uh, Library campaign locally. Um, the local authority reshaping of services, which could also be called cuts, is under a uh, Conservative Executive Board lead member who oddly enough was the former Conservative candidate for Wrexham, Andrew Atkinson, and it's an independent and Conservative coalition administration running Wrexham Council locally. And they're specifically blaming Cardiff and also Westminster uh, for the lack of funding that's forcing these cuts. Isn't the local problem then created by your party? Well, I, I don't think it is. And I have been very careful in what I've said on this campaign because I fully understand the, the, the problems that the local authority have. Um, what they are conducting is, I think, a very sensible 
um, consultation process. I've attended um, two of those consultations myself in Chirk and Overton, and I've seen for myself the kind of thoughtful way in which the the, the board of um, Wrexham Council, and also more importantly, in, in my view, the officials themselves. I, mean, I think everybody's been very impressed um, by, by their approach. And I've been involved in local government and, and I've been involved um, in, in when I was um, a councillor myself in saving our library. So it's something that particularly interests me. Um, but you have to work with the, the parameters of the local authority. And what I like about the way they're approaching it is rather than just saying, well, you know, there isn't enough money, therefore we, we can't provide the service. They're actually going out to people and saying, what do you want? How, how do you want this service? And I've been very careful to, to, to um, make my um, contribution um, along those lines of encouraging people, I put an advert out, encouraging people to actually go and attend the consultations. There are different ways of, of supplying a library service. It doesn't have to be done one dimensionally. But ultimately, the, I think that the problem for Wrexham Council, and it's the same for many other councils, is that there is a two-tier system in the way that the, the Welsh Labour Government in Cardiff actually allot um, their finance to local authorities. Some are very well looked after and some are not. And, and, and the funding formula that the Welsh Government uses is, is not fit for purpose. And I do not see why um, the, the Wrexham Council, um, Denbyshire, um, Powys and, and a lot of other ones, which happen to be more in the mid and North Wales, um, have uh, either neutral or negative settlements. And a lot of the councils in the South have significant increases. And it's not good enough to say that it's all done by a carefully worked out deprivation um, formula, because that simply isn't true. There is significant deprivation in, in, around where we live as well. So ultimately, Wrexham Council is trying to achieve the impossible, which is to deal with a negative settlement from Cardiff and to actually deliver on a lot of services, um, which is being expected to do. So I've tried on the library service to be, to be careful what I say, but to highlight a, a service which I think is of great value and affection to the people of Cluid South. We've had Prime Minister Theresa May uh, visit the area a few times during the last election campaign, so it's not beyond the realms of possibility that Boris Johnson could visit. If he did visit uh, Clue South or around with you and referred to tank top bum boys, flag waving people as pickaninnies with watermelon smiles, or compared Muslim women who wear burqas as letterboxes and bank robbers in your company, what would you do? Well, I, I um, hope very much that um, in my company, he would be um, singing the praises of Cluid South, which is of course where he started his parliamentary career back in 1997. It's an area he knows very well. And I've, sp I've spoken personally to him about Cluid South. And what I've been really impressed by is the way in which he's kept in touch with a lot of people here. Um, he, he wouldn't, um, you know, say that, um, brandish that as an accomplishment publicly, but I know behind the scenes, he takes this constituency very seriously. He takes the issues that affect this constituency very seriously. And he's gone out of his way to keep in touch with quite a lot of people who he first met 22 years ago here. So um, I think if, if he came to Cluid South, and I haven't got a clue whether he'd, he'd come or not, I think you'd find he'd get a very warm reception and he would be um, talking to quite a lot of old friends um, with whom he's kept in touch over the intervening years. Uh, as it's something that's been brought up by the Conservative leader candidates themselves, do you think your party and leader have done enough to tackle Islamophobia? And if not, what more would you want to see done? Well, I think that um, uh, there, there is going to be an independent inquiry into Islamophobia in the Conservative Party, just as there are um, inquiries into anti-Semitism in the Labour Party. And both parties um, need to make sure that the way in which they speak about people and they conduct themselves is of the very highest standards. And that's certainly something that I try very hard to do personally. 
and um, in my view, and I think everybody else in the Conservative Party, and I'm sure in the Labour Party, racism of any kind is, is unforgivable and must never be allowed to, to go unchecked. We're filming this on Wednesday the 20th. Uh, last night was the first leaders' debates, and during that, the CCHQ press office, which used to, on Twitter, have the uh, branding of official Conservative Party press office, providing snippets of news and commentary from CCHQ, was rebranded during the debate to Fact Check UK, fact checking Labour from CCHQ. This follows a few questionable things, such as Keir Starmer edited to make it look as though he was at a loss for words when asked about Labour's Brexit position when he answered the question. Do you think that's the kind of thing that your party should be doing? Isn't it misleading people and doesn't it help undermine trust in politics? Well, I, I don't know the ins and outs of um, the, the situations that you're talking about. Um, I don't know whether those are uh, entirely accurate, the way you've presented it. I'm not, I'm not questioning you, Rob, but I just don't know the, the, the full details of it. But I can tell you that and one of the questions that you've, you've very sensibly asked us as candidates um, and I've responded to is that we maintain the highest levels of accuracy and honesty we can as candidates fighting the election in Clwyd South and Wrexham and I, I fully subscribe to that. I think it's extremely important and it's something that I've gone out of my way in my political career to, to be as straightforward as possible and be very careful what I say and in terms of particularly um, promising things um, committing to things which uh, uh, I cannot deliver on. So for me, the highest standards of accuracy and honesty are extremely important in, in political life. The Prime Minister Johnson was up the road in Deeside recently and promised 62 police on the streets there specifically. Uh, you were pictured with the Home Secretary shortly after that. Did you ask her about what Clue South would be getting? Uh, and if so, what did she say? Well, the, the, the figure of, of 62 is um, the, the, the initial delivery of additional um, police officers in North Wales. In fact, it's a, it's an, it's, it's a North Wales wide figure. The overall figure is 20,000 extra police across Britain and it's being delivered in a, a, a series of, of increases. It can't all be done overnight. Um, and that's certainly one of the subjects that, that came up. I mean, the, the visit was primarily to go to Brickfield Rangers, and I've, been, I've had relations and contact with Brickfield Rangers for a number of years. And what I was trying to show the Home Secretary, and she was very impressed by, was a group of people who, a lot of whom are volunteers, who work extremely hard with youngsters in the community um, to give them an enjoyable um, activities in terms of football, futsal, and also in the, in the case of Brickfield, they do re recruitment and training as well through JM recruitment and training. And this to me is really the most important thing. If we are to improve our communities, and cut crime, we need to make sure that the youngest people um, have the kind of activities and enjoyable things to do in their lives that keeps them off the streets. And I felt that Brickfield Rangers was one of the many community um, organisations here, and they, uh, it's actually specifically in Wrexham, but it, it has a, a big reach into Clwyd South. And uh, she was very impressed by what they're doing. But we, you know, extra police is very important. I, I strongly subscribe to that. But we must make sure that our communities work for everybody. And in particular, uh, one of the areas I do want to focus on if I am elected is improving youth services as well. And I, I know this is a complicated subject. I know it's down to funding and everything else. But I think Brickfield Rangers demonstrates they've, they're a, a football club. And then they've, they've come into an agreement with JM Recruitment and Training. So they provide services from the club and that provides extra money. And that therefore means that, that Brickfield can continue to do their work. There are imaginative ways in which we can improve youth serv services. And that's something that I would very much like to focus on. You've mentioned policing numbers there uh, a couple of times and obviously the, the 20,000 figure, um, full fact, of uh, an independent fact-checking charity. 
uh, noted that between March 2010 and March 2019, the, the number of police officers in England and Wales fell by uh, 20,600. Isn't the new 20,000 just fixing a problem or the cuts that the Conservative Party have put through themselves? Well, I, I, I know this is a, an argument that, that's put forward. And the, the, the figure that you've given of cuts of 20,000, um, there are other corroborated figures where it's 10,000. But I take your point. Um, the number of police officers did diminish and we're rebuilding that. And I think that's the most important thing. Um, for me, the, the, we do need to make sure that we have police officers on the streets. The other thing I would say is that the, the way in which policing is done is very important. And clearly with technology, um, the, you, you can achieve more, um, uh, more productivity, if you like. I don't really like to use that word for the police, but they can do more um, with their current resources through the use of technology. And one of the key ways is, for instance, that a lot of the police now have tablets. So rather than having to fill uh, laborious paperwork in, they can do it there and then. They have recording devices so that there is a clear and accurate and unimpeachable record of the interaction they have with people. And all of this has meant that actually most police forces have been able to do more with less people. So although the police numbers have fallen, um, so too has crime over that nine year period that you're talking about. I mean, it's been quite a significant reduction in crime. But I, I'm not going to argue with your basic premise that we do need more police officers and I'm delighted that that's what we're doing. Uh, a coalition is a possible outcome of this election and obviously all the candidates say they're focused on the win. Uh, but putting that aside to force a direct answer, what would be your most comfortable coalition? Well, I, I'm, I'm clearly of the opinion that um, a coalition won't be needed as far as, as, far as we're concerned. I think that um, there's a, the, the opinion polls are showing a very strong lead for, for the Conservatives in this election, and that's certainly the um, canvas returns that I'm getting on the ground. And I think that's for a number of reasons. Um, partly it's because people feel that Boris Johnson would be a better prime minister. Well, he is prime minister, obviously, but would be in the next parliament than Jeremy Corbyn. And you see that in the overall opinion poll ratings. The um, majority of people include South, as I said earlier on, uh, are Brexit supporters, and they're turning to us in significant numbers, particularly from uh, long, long standing Labour voters. And I think if you put those facts together, then the likelihood is that we will see a, a Conservative majority after the 12th of December. Speaking about Brexit, how did you vote in the referendum? I voted for leave. And have you changed your position since? Or is no, it's not? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, I, I, um, as I said earlier, I've had a lot of experience of working in continental Europe and I'm not coming to Brexit as um, somebody who um, wants to pull up the drawbridge of Britain. I'm coming to it because I think that we can prosper on our own. I'm coming to it too because I feel that um, we need to control the number of people that are coming into the country. And I'm very pleased to see that Boris Johnson is talking about an Australian points um, system of immigration. And when you have um, 350,000 net increase in the population as we have done until recently, we can't manage that and it is of considerable concern to people and I think if you don't as, as politicians um, take that on board because that's what the ordinary people are telling you, you can have friction in society. I think it's much better to take it on board, find a sensible way of, of dealing with that issue and then that will mean that people will live more happily together which is what we all want. So for, for me, Brexit is also a great opportunity where we can um, plough and furrow internationally. And um, I think we will come to a, a good agreement with the EU. And I don't envisage us having um, many problems in terms of our interaction with the EU in the coming years. The backstop has gone and there's a new trade and regulatory border in the Irish Sea that could replace it. Can you explain very simply how that would work? Would there be border controls in Holyhead? Um, well, as it stands at the moment, the, um, the thinking is that, that that would not be the case. 
So um, the, the, the view is that the deal will deliver frictionless trade um, between Ireland and the UK. Um, but I think in all this, what we're looking at is the withdrawal agreement, um, which has actually passed through Parliament by majority. Um, so it's ready there that that will be passed on the 31st of Jan by the 31st of January. And then there will be a, a considerable period of um, working out the, the full details in the, um, in the intervening period. When you refer to you know, getting Brexit done, what, what are you talking about there? Is it getting the, the, that deal through and then uh, saying no deals off the table? Or is it looking further afield from that in terms of the negotiations? No, we're, we're very clear that, that this deal means no deal is off the table. And I'm very pleased about that. I would not have felt happy fighting this election on the basis of no deal. <coughs> so Boris Johnson's deal has received a majority support in the last parliament. Um, the next parliament will, will be very different in my opinion. And so for me, Brexit is Boris Johnson's deal, um, getting that through parliament and then the negotiations that will take place on the future relationship with the EU. The coalition of chaos is a, a buzzword used by conservatives, uh, yet the conservatives have only, ha only held a slim majority for just two of the past nine years. What makes Labour and SNP coalition more chaotic than the one your party had with the Lib Dems and DUP etc? Well I, I would argue that the um, coalition with the Lib Dems um, was far from chaotic. It was in fact um, not dysfunctional but highly functional and uh, in my opinion that was a, a sensible government that achieved um, a great deal for the country and I, I'm not going to try to pretend that um, since then everything has been hunky-dory. It's been, it's been difficult in Parliament and part of the problem has been that you have so many disparate views um, between the parties and to, to an extent within the parties and our, our party is no exception to that and that's why the pledge that I and the other um, 634 candidates have made to back Boris Johnson's deal is so important. And I think the new parliament will be a, a much more um, unified and coherent group of, mem of MPs. But in all this, I think that we, you, you can take a degree of comfort from what's happened in the last few years, which might, might sound a weird thing to say. But if you look at what's been going on in British politics, it has been a seismic change um, the expectation was not that it would be a leave vote in 2016. Um, that came as a surprise, it didn't come as a surprise to me because I'd stood here in the assembly election um, in 2016 in the run up to that, the, the referendum vote. And, it, I, and honestly, all that most people wanted to talk to me about was Brexit. So it came as no surprise to me when it was a leave vote here and nationally. But that has really been a, a huge um, disrupting factor. And to be fair to the MPs, uh, I'm, I've obviously not been part of the parliament. It's been a very difficult situation to deal with. But one comfort I do take from it is that I think it's shown British democracy actually working because the argument has taken place in the cockpit of, of Britain, which is the House of Commons. And you've seen no civil unrest on the issue. And if you compare to what's happening in France at the moment, um, the Gilets Jaunes um, in the streets, and you know, it, it, is a, it is a tribute to the oldest democracy in the world that we've been able to contain and discuss this issue um, without, without civil unrest. And what I have found in this election is that there is a, a real sense that people understand why it's being held and want to move on. And I think moving on is what we all desperately need to do. Have you got anything to add for potential voters watching this? Yes, I mean, I, I, I would just to, to sort of further comment on that point. Um, to me, I, I want to move on. I want to focus on the, the issues that matter, um, the, the issues of health, of education, of police, the environment. Um, transport, um, mobile phone signals that we've talked about, all the things that really matter to people here. 
Um, but ultimately, there is a very clear choice in this election, and that is that we, the Conservative Party, um, have a deal and will deliver that deal if we're elected. The Labour Party, and particularly the Welsh Labour Party, has changed its position on Brexit. Um, when I was standing uh, against Susan Ellen Jones in 2017, their manifesto said that they would deliver on Brexit. Since then, they've shifted their position to be a Remain supporting party and suggesting and putting forward a second referendum. And I don't find there's any appetite for that on the doorstep, um, that people want to get the deal done. And once we've done the deal, I think we all need to come together. Um, we, the, the needs to be harmony and political cooperation. I'm a great believer in um, cooperating across political parties. Uh, that's what I've done in local government. I, I'm not by nature a divisive person. I try and work with other people. And if I was elected as the Member of Parliament from Clued South, I'd be more than happy to work with the, the Labour Party, the independents, everybody else locally, to make sure that we achieve uh, the best um, for the communities and the people of this wonderful constituency. Brilliant, thank you.